In this video, we're going to take a look at modeling document settings inside of our files. Now, every single file has its own set of document settings. These settings are different than application options because they are controlled per document on a document by document basis. So here I have the entire assembly IAM, and in order to access our document settings, we go up to Tools, and we can see the Document Settings command there on the Options panel. Here inside of an assembly, I have five tabs, Standard, Units, Sketch, Modeling, and Bill of Material. On the first one, Standard, I can specify some settings for the lighting style, the display appearance, as well as some virtual component settings for my defaults. On the Units tab, I can specify my length and angle, time, mass. I can specify things which are important to how I model inside of this assembly document. On the Sketch tab, I have settings to control how I operate an assembly sketch inside of this environment. On the Modeling tab, I have settings controlling my 3D snap spacing, my initial view extents, some other controls here as well for holes and user coordinate systems. And on the last tab, I have a bill material setting to control how this assembly behaves when it's rolled into a bill material. I'm going to choose OK here and now go to my hub IPT, which I also have open. Here I'll look at the document settings for this part. Here you will see a lot of the tabs are the same. In fact, standard units, sketch, modeling, and build material are all the same. So if I go through here, you can see very similar tabs and settings across the top. I'm going to start back here on standard, though, to point out that a few things are different. For instance, this no longer talks about virtual components. This talks about the physical material of this part. What's the default when I start this file? It's going to be generic. Now, we'll talk later about what you can adjust in a template so that your modeling time is decreased and your adjustment time is decreased by making a few changes to a few of your settings here. On units, again, I can control my different sizing requirements for when I'm doing sketches, when I'm doing extrusions and revolves how I can input my values. Now Inventor is unit aware, so even if these are inches and I do things in millimeters, putting the unit behind it automatically changes my units for me. One thing I like to change is I like my document settings to have a display as expression for my dimensional formulas. Up here on Sketch, you can see settings again for snap spacing, my grid display if I have a grid turned on, if I would like to do line weights, I can have those turned on. If I'm doing 3D sketches, what my auto bend radius is for a 3D sketch. On the modeling tab, I have a little bit more information here. I have the ability to compact my model history, turn on my feature validation, which is basically a rebuild all to go through there and validate my features better. It's more of a check a logarithm, if you will. I also have a maintain enhanced graphics detail. Sounds good. Let's leave it on. We also have a participate in assembly and drawing sections. So this is where I can tell a file, you know what, I know I'm putting you in a section view, but let's not section you. I also have controls here again for the user coordinate system. The tapped hole diameter, we're always going to leave this at minor for the tapped hole. The 3D snap spacing, the naming prefix when I'm doing a multi-solid environment. So if I create solids 1, 2, 3, and 4, they'll have a prefix of solid 1, 2, 3, 4. Same thing with surfaces. For the initial view extents, if I'm working on very small parts, well, this should be small. If I'm working on very large parts, it should probably be larger. And I also have settings here for my Make Components dialog. This also pertains to when I work with multi-body solids. If I click on Options here, you can see a lot of settings here for multi-body settings. I'm going to cancel that for now. And on Bill of Material, I have controls again here for how this appears when I roll it into a build material and how the calculation takes place. Right now it's set to each. So if I had five of these, then my quantity would be five. If my quantity was a volume instead or a liquid value, so let's say I was trying to model grease or some water or some other fluid inside of something, I might change it from each to milliliters and have that based on a parameter. So then when I look at my bill of material, I would see, let's say, 15 milliliters instead of quantity 1. And on my last tab, I have my default tolerance. 
Now, most users will model Inventor files to a nominal size, and they'll do their tolerancing when they get to the drawing environment. That is the most common way to approach it. However, you could assign modeling tolerances and then have a higher and lower value for those tolerances and adjust those and check your fits based on your settings. This is where you can set up those default values. I'm going to choose OK to exit out of this box. And the only other file we didn't really look at was a drawing document settings. So I'm just going to start a new file based on the ANSI inch DWG template. Basically just a new file. Go up to tools and look at document settings now for our drawing. Now these settings here, not as many tabs. I do have an active standard which controls which drafting standard I'm using which would be different dimension styles, different view orientations, if I'm doing first angle or third angle of projection, all things like that. On the sketch tab, some very basic things here for doing drawing based sketches. On the drawing tab, I'll find a lot more options. In fact, this tab only exists here. I can defer updates for my drawing, so no updates propagate into this file when it's opened. I can control cross-hatch clipping, which controls whether I have dimensions or text that clip when there's a hatch involved. I have settings for my automated center lines command. I have other settings for my memory saving mode, my shaded views, for when dimension text gets aligned, what is it aligned to, and also properties in my drawing. Do I want to copy in model properties to my drawing eye properties as well? So there's a lot more settings here for drawings. The last tab, Sheet, is also exclusive to the drawing. And here I can control the names of my default sheets. Right here it's called Sheet 1, or rather just Sheet, that is. As I create new sheets, I'll get Sheet 1, Sheet 2, Sheet 3. I can name that instead, let's say, Layout. And then as I create new sheets, it'll be Layout 1, Layout 2, Layout 3. And I also have colors on the right-hand side. If you're tired of this kind of parchment background, you could come here to the sheet color and change that to, well, let's say, white and I'll apply that and you'll see the change. Or if you want to be more like the Mythbusters, you could come in here and make like a blueprint color. Let's try that. A little crazy, but it, hey, it's kind of cool. So you can adjust these settings here inside of your document settings for a drawing. So this has been a look at document settings inside different file types of Autodesk Inventor.